Welcome back to our ongoing Office 365 series. So in this video we are going to talk about spam, spam filtering in Office 365. Um, I basically I signed up to all of these um, stores or whatever through the email. So I wanted to see when this starts sending me emails what ends up in the email it seems like only one email was in the junk or spam uh, all of them other than, like they are being delivered in the um, inbox and then there is one in the other Burlington so basically the spam when the engine detects like um, the server like they have uh, data from hundreds and thousands of users or uh, when they detect that this sender this email is being sent from a suspicious IP or it has keywords or there is code in it uh, then they you know collectively they scan all of them and then you know start uh, putting emails so now this may not be but because it's coming from a really weird um, domain and all that so it it is I know it's a legit business it's actually business here in Ohio but just because of like how they operate on what not it just marked as spam like so let's go to the office portal and see the how the uh, the spam is managed in office 365 so you have to go to the admin section and you have to go into the exchange because exchange is the one that um, governs or takes care for everything uh, email related so it should be under protection malware filter oh okay I have to make a video about this as well and uh, I'm gonna talk about this one but this is like uh, at the moment it's the biggest threat after viruses um, it's crazy they actually demand money to remove this from your computer so let's go to the spam filter here so we have two things one is the spam filter the other one is out spam we're gonna talk about both of them what's in connection filter Alright, so I'm gonna look into it and then make a video. So let's uh, um, do the spam. So, like always, Office 365 does a great job of uh, letting you know, like with the description and everything, so you can read it. You actually learn a lot just by reading it. So, it's what it's saying is this is the default policy, priority is the lowest. You can actually go and edit it. In the summary section it's tell you quickly what it is about it is enable it's doing the minimum bare minimum thing whatever uh, it's just a detector uh, detection response um, and what it's gonna do is just move them to a junk mail folder uh, so you can see what's going on and if it email is important just like uh, that uh, for example if you really want this email you can move it to inbox and make sure so um, basically when you say something like here it's not spam so mark has not junk mark add to safe send out all that so that is uh, that's how the filter knows that hey this is a legit this user wants this email all right the other one is that uh, bulk mail bulk emails are like uh, digest emails um, so normally they are from like websites that forums mostly like if you are subscribed to a f or you have replied to a few threads so what they do is they at the end of the day or and end of the week they send you a digest uh, email which uh, has uh, an update of all those uh, threads of what's going on <coughs> Or newsletter as well so newsletters like the uh, back in very early um, 
I'm talking about like at least around 2000 there was a website uh, they will send you an email every day with the softwares like latest and 2001 2000 was the time when everything was booming dot com so there were like softwares up and down everywhere so they will send you an email every day with the all the softwares and what they do like that description so I will subscribe to that one um next one so threshold we're gonna see what it is it's a seven default value and senders block list senders oh, okay and allow list so if you remember here you can add to save sender so it gets in the if I click here it will be added to my safe senders list so they this sender will be allowed to email to me and if I block it it will be in the block senders list uh, here mm, block list oh senders block list this is the domain so you can actually do, uh, block a whole domain so who uh, for example um, you don't want to do anything with the emails that comes from any domain uh, like business for example you don't want anything uh, like any emails from amazon.com so you can block it but don't do it because of you, if you shop over there all right so it's like domain blocks the email doesn't matter uh, who is in, who is in that company it just detects the um, uh, domain and blocks it domain loss international spam is language um, we all get those emails where they're offering like you know a huge sum of money uh, for your help and you know but it says language here so I believe mm, it would be like if the like it's if it's not English does like it does not get delivered I'm just assuming so regions uh, regions could be another thing like if the email is originating from a certain country or a certain region it doesn't get delivered and user spam notification I'm not sure what it is so we're gonna go and see and user spam notification oh it's right here actually enable and user spam notification periodic and user spam notification I am really not sure what it is there is one thing yet uh, that's being done with the system admins basically they intentionally send you a phishing email with something stupid in it like um, your inbox is uh, almost full or hey you have your password is expiring something like that and there's a link that you can click something like that so basically it's just a phishing email it's shouldn't I don't see phishing here so it's just like to get the information from you uh, uh, but since it's um, your system admin is sending so there's no harm done even if you click on it but don't basically they want to train you not to click on them I thought that this would be this one but when I see that three per day no this is something else I'm gonna search uh, end user spam notification let me go ahead and do it right now let me pause the video all right so it looks like the end user spam notification is uh, a list of all the spam messages Ah, uh, okay that has been quarantined like there were um, spam emails messages bound to that user but they have been captured and quarantined so it will send them a notification just that so that was it test mode options I'm not sure what it is but let's go and see what really in this one the default policy you can either double click it or you can click the pencil uh, the name is default there is nothing in the description um, okay here's the fun stuff let's go and make it big all right let's say spam and bulk bulk actions 
for spam there is a number of uh, options available with the drop down mm, the famous one that we are also used to they are moved to the junk mail folder <clears throat> add x header is the one that basically change the information in the header like the header it adds value or x header um, I, so prepend subject line with text so prepend is like um, like if the subject is one word so they add something in it for example if I click uh, add x header text you, you can add the text here so if you select add x header you can add the text over here oh okay let's go one by one if you are moving it to the junk folder in out office 365 that email will be kept for 15 days if you prefer to add x header you see this one is still but uh, um, you can add a header text here that will be automatically added to the email uh, you can do anything like possibly a spam message uh, in the header if you want to prepend the subject line so now it's not going to add in the header it's going to add in the subject for example it will say likely spam so if you put like likely spam and then you put like this so whatever the um, uh, it will show up like this and if I go here outlook and that's the what is the header oh confirm mailing list subscribe right this one okay so rather than saying confirm mailing list subscription it will say likely spam dash 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 confirm mailing list subscription so that's how this uh, email will appear where it is <laughs> whenever I do that yeah. All right, so the next one is uh, like it will say conf confirm like um, all right so I, I was going to write it but that will confuse you so basically this will be this part will be added in front of the subject of that email message last uh, no last last redirect messages to email address so if an spam may if spam is direct um, detected that is a spam email so there could be a mailbox that is set up that all the spam will be go there and for the review for somebody to review it or it's just like sit there delete message uh, this one is like a bit strict like uh, maybe it's not spam but as soon as it's received it gets deleted quarantine so if it is um, a spam it will be quarantine I want to make it quarantine because I want to make another video how to find if you know a uh, big actually it happened to our at work um, I, I'm, I'm in Columbus Ohio so we have the Ohio State University a gentleman called and said that he is getting emails from everybody except for his uh, uh, Ohio State um, domain and I thought that maybe he has blocked the domain so I had him checked uh, go into the settings and check uh, the safe sender list or allowed sender list and block sender list and uh, has he first we uh, I made him check uh, if the block sender list has that domain there was none when I asked, asked him to add the um, osu.edu domain to add to the safe sender and allowed sender list and it was he was still not receiving so he was receiving emails from everybody except for that so um, with the help of the leadership leads uh, I had to escalate it for the follow-up through uh, by the engineers um, so I wanted to see like um, basically I was told that they can actually trace the message if it's coming in we had to get the header information from him and I wrote everything down in the uh, that escalation ticket so basically what happens is that they can actually trace if an email 
incoming email where it got stopped like why at what point it gets uh, blocked and not moves to all the way into the uh, intended recipients um, e inbox so I'm gonna leave it to in quarantine so if uh, Ollie gets any spam it goes to quarantine and we can trace we can do the trace thing and high confidence email Oh, uh, okay spam is what is likely like this the value auto auction email uh, let me go and click on any link confirm subscription so they start sending me email all right let's preference as well Ali update yeah start sending me email that gets stopped get stopped in quarantine and I can trace that all right so let's go back to <laughs> um, our spam again all right all right um, so <clears throat> Uh, there is a spam and then high confidence spam. I read up earlier on this one. Um, so basically, spam is what could or may may or may not be spam. But high confidence spam is like uh, what I talked about earlier. They have data from all of these like hundred and thousands of uh, email inboxes. They know that if they detect, hey, this guy, uh, like all of us, how how many people do we know? We have like maybe two or three dozen family members. That we don't care to send emails uh, like once in a blue moon whenever there is occasion like Christmas or something big um, or your local whatever festivities you might send here here and there uh, uh, an email um, and for your co-workers yes you do use a lot of emailing but uh, you use your own um, like your, uh, like your company domain, you, do, you don't use your personal email. So if this uh, the engine like Microsoft, uh, whatever they have built in the back end, detects that, uh, hey, this address sends to uh, e e e emails, messages to like thousands of people or hundreds of people, he, it's more than unlikely that he or she knows or the, um, that email owner knows all of them. And if they're especially in their different region, they have like, uh, different countries so that's high confidence spam that uh, they are confident that it is spam so for that there is different option again everything same and they are giving you an option like if we back that this is highly likely to be spam what you want it to be so again move to junk mail I'm gonna leave it over uh, let me actually quarantine I really want to do that uh, check how the trace uh, tracing of an email where it's getting stopped uh, thing all right so I'm gonna I should click save now so I can if I make any changes in the other thing that I don't want I can cancel them all right so let's get back to oh my favorite block list that's what I was talking about all right so everything I don't want that I want um, basically I want my user to call me hey we are not seeing this email my uncle sending <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> all right so but that that's how it's done you know that somebody sent you an email and it's not getting you so you contact your system admin block um, let's do the block list again um, a user can block them like I showed you in the email they can click on right here and they can block or save but that's individual uh, what if you want to do that okay all right so you want to add a, us an individual uh, maybe this individual uh, is a like we are um, at our work we have some not so happy customers and if they get a hold of your email what they're gonna do they're gonna start spamming you like they're gonna um, start sending you um, stupid emails so you can add their email address for example um, right there they, they've given the option as well but say like, my name is Imran so for example Imran at gmail.com this is not my email address by the way so uh, you can add 
okay and you see now this sender he's happy that I am catharsizing um, I'm doing my catharsis I am uh, venting basically okay uh, uh, and he is uh, sending all these um, not so fun emails um, and he's thinking hey, okay I'm venting I'm really giving them um, uh, a piece of my mind uh, but he doesn't know that we have blocked his uh, email address so even though he's sending they are simply going straight to not being delivered I don't know whether they're, going, they're being deleted or they're being quarantined um, we, we, we can find out actually I can add one of my email address yeah I should do that uh, no God. Oh, okay that was good so I can put uh, my email address uh, should I put this one no I should not put this one either okay yeah let me put this one I don't use it much so the other one I have to sometime forward important things so I'm gonna use this one I yep so I added it because what I want to do is I want to in a day or two I'm gonna send a email from this address uh, so when I do the the quarantine thing I will see if my email address uh, like uh, if it's there it means that uh, block list gets quarantine and if it's not there it means that they go to the delete uh, right away B domain block domain block is like I mentioned that gentleman was not receiving any email from anybody uh, all of his buddies they were they had the OSU email addresses they were sending him email and he was not getting it so this is uh, if you b dom uh, block the whole domain for example do you know what will happen if you block the gmail.com nobody who has the gmail address and there are millions of addresses from gmail if somebody has a gmail address they cannot send you email so you do not want to mess up with giant domains gmail.com for example if uh, uh, for example Imran had gmail address so you want to make sure that you are blocking the uh, um, that individual address email address and not the whole domain that will um, it's not hard to go and reset it like take care of it but don't do it it's uh, if um, your manager or supervisor sees you're gonna think that you have no mind uh, pay attention so but for example you don't want your uh, office user to get emails from Burlington or Old Navy because that's not of uh, amazon.com yeah if it's a business yep acceptable um, to some degree um, some other sh shopping site where the user might have bought something uh, for office or for business but Old Navy or like all these shopping Macy's that's not acceptable so you can add that domain so they don't receive any emails or and for example this is a um, a website I like domain they have they they are a software company or something that's spamming you you don't want to you know receive those emails so you add their domain all right so let's go to the next one allow list allow list is a sender so there is a, this ad, a sender that you sh want email from no matter what so you can add his email or her email address here so even okay this is important I'm gonna talk about it in a minute so this is like for example you don't want ever for for any reason like uh, it's it's like a safety precaution measure. Uh, so you want that senders email no matter what to be delivered uh, so the uh, email engine exchange checks uh, the list and if the email is coming against this address it gets delivered 
he doesn't get quarantine um that's not a guarantee actually because the there are other things like if they are sending you an exe what's gonna happen then like i know like back in college when uh, there were some like um file types that uh, because we had to send our um we had to send our um, assignments through email like we would send it and you know and work it on but the, as long as the email is microsoft document or excel or um, like a text then it gets delivered but if it was an exe it won't or uh, or a zip file as well the reason was that we were like uh, doing the c c number uh, c plus plus so when you are running the c plus plus you get two files one is that uh, is a text file and when you convert it when you run it it creates a exe so basically when you run the exe it shows you uh, the result so whenever we send that one it will not be get delivered so allow senders like if they are not sending you something i, I believe like an exe or something like sensitive uh th their email will be delivered domain allow list there is a warning like do not uh, add a popular domain like microsoft.com or anyone because somebody they can make an account and they can start sending you emails through that account and you will think that hey this is legit but that will not be because it's somebody who is impersonating them uh, and yes it is possible uh, to send an email through a somebody's email address or domain it's not actually they, they are not actually hacked and uh, the person has no um, access to their system is spoofing like uh, it will sh show up their email address but if you go and uh, look at the code and the header and go like really be behind the web page you can see so that's what they're saying let's the international spam oh i was right written in the following languages okay so i had a hunch when it said language because i've seen um emails written in africans or something and hebrew and other like you cannot read that so it should be all right yep all the language oh chinese yes i've seen chinese emails as well it's like um so basically you if you're is it small e in i think a small in people but uh, oh actually they send emails in english i'm sorry so basically if an email is not in one of um, uh, is not in English and you're getting a lot of emails with Chinese um, the thing with Chinese is that uh, they start sending you emails no matter what even if they get hold of your phone number um, like you buy something and you accidentally add the number or give the number they start send calling you uh, I have a friend he I don't know what he bought but he, he had to give the number and then every day he's getting at least 10 15 calls imagine that so so this is the uh, email related filter that if uh, for example the emails are written in chinese you can click add and okay so now any email that is in chinese will not be delivered to your inbox for that matter you can actually add everything except for english it's up to you what language you understand or what language what email you want to be delivered okay filter that's the country's region i was right okay so <clears throat> yep oh uh, i thought that there would be regions as well but uh, it looks like it's just uh, it, it's uh, like divided by countries uh, so i thought that it would be like eastern europe europe africa north america south america something like that but it's more uh, like it's um, more precise um, it's like through the country so if an email is originating from Albania or any other country for that matter Australia big country so you will not receive that email uh, just add it 
let's go Afghanistan so it's right there very easy now let's go to the advanced option so. oh okay so <clears throat> like I was saying IP biz or info website ah, nothing comes out of biz or info website VB script iframe all right so let's see this one by one so you see <coughs> excuse me sorry about that I let's go <laughs> it's again starting so uh, if uh, how this works image links to remote site you get uh, emails and back in the day you had to reply to them <coughs> now what they do is they put uh, images in the email so basically when that email image loads in your browser they get like it's set up through their web servers or whatever that they get the notification that you have seen it it's a way of them through knowing and verifying that you got this email and you have viewed it numeric IP address in the URL so if the URL you see everything is uh, numbers right so if there is like uh, basically this um, name has a number behind it so you can actually check um, so how it works is that either you can use for example either either you when you type in google.com you can actually type in that uh, G, Google's uh, numeric IP address as well and it will take you to Google uh, you see that is if that email uh, that URL is a numeric address that's fishy like a the general rule is everybody or all the URLs they are like human readable form let me show you actually so if I go to Google numeric IP address all right so if I click let's see if I nope google.com Oh, that's the DNS. It's not understanding me. Yes. Let's see eight dot eight dot eight dot eight. Why does it make me? That's uh, their DNS and not the Google dot com. They're giving this. Okay, right there, I think. So. okay let's do the ping I'm off topic now or am I not CMD ping google.com that's the address right there 172 217 so 172 <coughs> 172.217.8.206 and hopefully right there so okay Be either you can enter google.com or you can enter that IP address once what was it I forgot okay I already forgot 172 
this one so you see uh, let me show you like go to yahoo.com you see that's a Yahoo app page and if I enter this one hit enter it takes me to Google so that what they mean by if there's a numeric IP address <clears throat> so all these web addresses that we see on the internet they have a numeric IP address so how hard it was for me to actually just write it down for one site imagine if you have to do it for all the site you have to remember for your email on uh, everything so how easy it has become in a human readable form so if it's not it's gonna get blocked all right the other port like uh, there's a special port uh, for the email I forgot what it was I think it was 93 or something but uh, you know if it's redirecting the traffic the URL oh sorry URL so if it's the URL is not for the normal HTTP I think it's 143 or something so if it's not using that port and going through the another port then block it and if the URL is to a website that is dot biz or info because they are normally with the you know all that uh, um, they're called click uh, magnets so basically they just want you to click on links and links and you know it's like um, advertisement heaven whoever is advertising on those sites they get uh, big money because the user keeps clicking on links and you know the advertisement gets loaded and loading so <clears throat> the other one is mark as spam what was the first one images mark them spam if it's an empty message empty messages um, I, I do it a lot actually whenever I'm sending something even if it's a link uh, and I want it to you know I want to I don't add it to bookmark um, I just quickly copy paste into my uh, email and send it so I don't add any oh actually I don't add the uh, subject so I confused it empty message that like there is nothing in the message area it's totally empty uh, basically uh, just the other day I did send uh, one or two empty messages uh, when I was checking uh, making that exchange video but was like three weeks ago so I just you know send type in the address and send it I was just checking if this uh, that uh, it gets delivered or not so I think it's exactly the same empty messages whether they do want to check uh, the, like what I was checking is if I don't get a uh, like message from back in the day you would get a message from the webmaster or mail master uh, saying that this must um, email is an un, undelivered so I was waiting for that email I think it's exactly the same thing JavaScript or VB scripts uh, we all know that scripts can be run and in the uh, web browser they do different things um, some of the people they simply disable them I used to do that uh, especially with the uh, uh, when I was um, like annoying pop-ups that they come up or you know to click the the only way to get rid of them is if you disable scripting frames frames is ah uh, it gave me back flash uh, again around 2000 so when you are developing websites frame is basically a site a page within a page so basically you can add a frame on this area so you can add all the information around and this frame is a website of its own you if it could be like uh, another page on over here or another website over here it's totally like a f that's called five frame object tags I have no idea objects objects are like it's something with the HTML I don't, I'm remembering something but I'm not sure embed tags embed tags is like a, the most common um, uh, example would be when you embed your YouTube video to your blog 
so when you get that code and you put it paste it uh, that's basically you're embedding that video the other option uh, the other example is when you do the Google Adsense you get that code remember the embed code and you put it in your code that's embedding so if there's embed tags in HTML it says something like E M B D and that so it's like a tag when it detects it it gets detected that email goes to the spam form tags forms it's um, everything we do is a form like when we sign up for the email that's a form you fill so if there's a form tag in the HTML that somebody is probably trying to fish um, uh, information because it's one thing for somebody to hey can you click on this link go to our website and then enter your information but how easy it is if you form make a form right there in that email and ask them to enter information and they will be tempted to just the other day I had received a, a call from an um, unfortunate lady and she said that she had received an email from Charter and it asked her to update her information and she clicked on the link and it asked her uh, for her social security number and as soon as she said that I told her you that email was not from us we do not collect social security numbers ever we do not ask them doesn't matter email or in person or on the phone so if you have entered it somewhere there was a field that they asked you probably uh, were fished and you need to keep an eye on your credit now so that's the form tags like the, they are asking you enter it and as soon as you click that button that's information has been sent when you are doing the web um, um, building thing I did that for like um, way back um, when I was in college or no before college actually yes before college so it was like um, I I had a um, what I do is I read book and then you know do lab so I had a book that taught uh, HTML so I did that so but I'm talking about in 2000 exactly in 2000 or 2001 so web bugs is like the bugs that are on the web and they spread through HTML or the website like they say hey don't go visit that website it can affect uh, uh, your um, um, computer so basically what happens is when you go and you visit that website or you open that email you see uh, it was a huge back in uh, in early 2000s uh, like uh, you open that email the bug gets copied into your system and it st starts sending emails uh, to everybody in your contact list and they get inf infected and it's spread like a wildfire and this one is the apply sensitive sensitive word list so this is what I was talking about like if you know that this is one user that he is angry at you and he does not like not so happy he gonna start sending you some emails and he might use or anybody might like you know once he does it and he use some strong language you know you block him but for future you want to add a list of words that it's on so I don't know where we can go and add the words I'm assuming Where is the sensitive word list? <laughs> um, I'm I, either we can like edit it or test. So test should be <coughs> the other one is test. <coughs> I thought that when I turn it on, there will be an option here that I can add all the sensitive words. I don't know. That's not there. Let's leave it on. <coughs> so sensitive words. If it's like strong language, something like that, it's there. The email is going to straight to the spam. SPF record and conditional sender ID filtering and NDR backstatter. I have no idea what they are. Non deliverable recipient backscatter. All right, so I have no idea. I'm just making stuff up. 
All right, so even if they are important, I'm pretty sure that uh, the admin or your, you know, they will tell you. Or when the situation arises, you can do a quick Google search and learn them. Test mode. Oh, I, I saw test somewhere here. Yeah, test. Test mode option. So add the default text X header. X header we saw right here, I think. Yep. And send the BCC message to this address. So if something is detected when you are testing, you send that a blank copy to an email address that could be one of the admins or yours if you are the admin so you can save it let's go and save it so this was the overview of the spam mm, and it's a long video oh I still have to see the outbound this video is going to be even longer security and compliance center anti-spam page outbound spam will have a new home okay let's go there if it's like really long I'm gonna make another video probably okay that's new protection dot office dot com anti-spam setting is it loading what it's doing oh, okay it's loading so here you can either create a policy or create an outbound policy Is this something different than what we saw earlier? Yes. Let's see if it's added policy. Oh, you see, oh, phishing is included now. So I should wrap this video here. I'm gonna make another video about this, definitely. All right, if this video has helped you, please uh, comment, subscribe, share, and rate, and you have a good night.